Hey y'all, Scott here, and today we're gonna be discussing a classic case of... It's that time again, let's go to Best Buy and see how many games in the Mario series are on the shelf. Alright, now let's see how many games in the Sushi Striker series they have. What?! Nintendo obviously got hooked on something and it ain't phonics. When a new video game franchise does well, the first many will ask is... What's next? A sequel, a spin-off, a port, a remaster, a brand deal? In the case of the series we're talking today, all of the above! The gaming industry has consistently been finger-wagged at for milking the exact same franchises over and over again. Instead of making something brand new, hey, the people want a third sequel to FIFA 13 this year, let's give them what they want. It's so weird because we've all complained at least once about too much of a certain series, but the only reason why there's too much of something is because it's successful. Whether it's critically or commercially, more so commercially, if a series sees success, we're definitely gonna see more of it. But when does this become too much? I think we all like to see good games from good series come out, but when do we all tell a franchise to back off? Assassin's Creed is the poster child for this is too much. What started out as a game that received decent reviews turned into sequel, sequel to the sequel, sequel to that sequel, threequel, the fourth one everybody liked, a bunch more, handheld side games, an episodic series of 2D games, books, comics, a movie in 2016, all within 10 years. You know, Ubisoft made Assassin's Creed a yearly thing until they said, you know what, we don't want to drive our franchise into the ground, let's take 2016 off to prove to people we won't make this game every year. They then continue to make this game every year. Sales for the games were declining steadily alongside some lame feedback on some entries so a break was definitely necessary to ensure more quality comparative to quantity. After 2016 only saw an Assassin's Creed movie release, 2017's Origins proved that taking a break has more benefits than it may initially seem. So if Ubisoft wants Just Dance to have a future, they're gonna have to take 2020 off and release a movie instead. Only Nintendo could put cows out of business with how much they milk Mario. Just look at Nintendo's output of games on the Wii U. Here we have all the games from the Mario universe compared to Zelda, Star Fox, Kirby, and Metroid. I mean, hey, I love me a good Mario game, spin-off, mainline, whatever, but not only did the over-reliance on Mario titles take a lot of the variety out of this system, and frankly other Nintendo consoles, but it also did a bit of damage to the brand. Constant releases really take a lot of the magic out of a new entry if it happens every single year. There's something to be said about waiting a decent amount of time for a new game. Sure, it can be tough to go so long without a new Wii Music, but when it finally comes out, it'll be just as bad as you wanted it to be. As an actual example, mainline Mario platforming games were coming out constantly from 2009 to 2013, and it honestly devalued the experience of what a new Mario game is. They came out so frequently, who cared? People were getting the names between the games confused. I've heard so many people get super Super Mario 3D Land and World mixed up. Many looked the same, sales weren't as great as Nintendo probably wanted them to be. But then, they did the unthinkable. They didn't make a new Mario platformer for four years, and guess what happened? I forget its name, but I think 10 million plus copies of it were sold. Releasing games annually does have its benefits, there's no doubt about that. People are conditioned to picking up the new Call of Duty, Madden, and FIFA every year, and it works fine enough for those series. But while Assassin's Creed and Mario backed away from annual releases and benefited from it, some series are almost or straight up killed because of oversaturation. What well, once was as consistent as Mega Man became as consistent as Mega Man. It was an oversaturated franchise for a good long while until the great Mega Man drought of the 2010s went into effect. Side series, spin-offs, main games, all just stopped out of nowhere. Now I don't think Mega Man went on hiatus due to oversaturation, but it definitely didn't help. The franchise became so complicated at that point with all these side series that I feel like Capcom eventually had a crazy hard time figuring out what exactly to do with Mega Man. A similar thing happened with Castlevania, games were churned out multiple times a year until we were met with this fate. Of course Sega barely supports any of their franchises, so they mainly milk Sonic and, weirdly enough, uh, Yakuza recently. Well, they've put out a lot of Yakuza games in the past few years, and I feel like we're getting a bit too many in such a short amount of time. I know some are remakes, but that's just so many Yakuza games on the shelf, man. I'm worried it's gonna become a bit too much at some point. Regardless of whatever franchise is Sega's new extra flavor of the month, Sonic is the only franchise Sega has faith in enough to consistently throw onto retail shelves. Yeah, instead of a new House of the Dead or Super Monkey Ball, let's put out Sonic f***ing Forces. I like a decent amount of Sonic games, but even the most diehard fans have to admit, Man, these were not made out of love. These were churned out because Sonic is the only thing Sega knows for a fact sells well. But no other video game franchise, in my opinion, has been milked to death. More so than...
Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Hyper Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers, and that's just Street Fighter 2! There's like four different versions of Tetris on each platform, like why do we need more than one? How many Pokemon games does it take to count as an overdose? Huh, remember when Square Enix asked us, hey you like Final Fantasy 15? And that is how a restraining order is filed! Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. The thing is, a company can't just ignore a product of theirs that's selling crazy well. They still have to act upon it and release sequels, expansions, re-releases. They need to support that series. It's just... you gotta put your foot down at some point. It's fair to say many people just like to complain about something popular just because, get this, it's popular. People love to complain, but there's complaining just because something's popular, and then there's complaining about oversaturation. Variety is key in the video game industry, and when we see nothing but Halo and Gears of War on the Xbox, it's boring and makes the games less special. Here's your weekly reminder slash threat that if you don't want to see more of the same series from a developer, just don't buy the games unless your prescription calls for weekly copies of Skyrim. There's a clear difference between supporting a series and milking it. When you get to the point where games blend together and people start to get sick of seeing a franchise everywhere, you know it's gone too far. There's no shame in taking a year or two off, or even longer. Waiting makes things more special in my opinion, and it's proven to be a successful tactic. It's great to see your favorite series heavily supported, but game companies need to know when to pump the brakes to ensure that their games still have the impact they want them to have. I've gone this whole time without showing any form of dairy. Nice observation, me. I've actually been using this time to read up on an old family recipe to bake my own milk for this very moment. That's probably it. Ah, where's the rewind button?